Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on industrial electronics and four that is uh, working on revisions that is uh, on AC theory. We've got uh, the question that is uh, question number two of uh, November 2022. 20, All right, so, so our first part on 2.1 was to draw a neat waveform uh, of an RLC series circuit illustrating each of the following. So we have got uh, the following concept that we need that we need to have. Uh, 2.11, we need a condition whereby our VR, which is the voltage across the resistor, is in phase with the, the current, which is the total current. Uh, then the second part, when VL, which is the voltage across the inductor, leads the, the total current or where VC, uh, that is the voltage across the capacitor, legs, uh, the total current. So these are the three that you're going to have. All right, so I've got the illustration of these three together. So let us see what we got here. So the first part, we need a condition where our voltage in this case, of course, is in phase with the total current. Uh, so this is how we are going to have our diagram in this manner. And where our VL leads the current, this is how we are going to have our voltage presented. And the last one, if VC legs the current, all right, so that is a VL and VC, uh, that is a VL going in the uh, anti-clockwise, while it's the VC going in the clockwise direction. All right, so that was a 2.1, 2.12, and 2.13 combined. That is a six marks for that. So uh, when you're asked to illustrate the waveform, this is how we are supposed to present our waveforms. Uh, I think we remember this from our revisions. Uh, on 2.2, we are now given an LC circuit resonating at... Uh, Five megahertz. So, given the the the, the resonant frequency in this case, it's resonating at uh, five megahertz in this case, and we are given the Q factor, which is the quality factor of two hundred and fifty. Find the total bandwidth. That is uh the total bandwidth in this case. We are not given. We are asked you to find the total bandwidth given and the edge frequencies. All right, and also the edge frequencies, which is uh, FH and fl how are we going to obtain uh these three just given the resonant frequency and the quality factor so we are ought to also understand our formulas uh, i also explained this formula these formulas before that uh the total bandwidth uh is given as the change uh in the h frequencies which is fh minus fl which is uh, also equal to the resonant frequency over the quality factor. So these uh, this, uh, these two formulas, they give us the total bandwidth in this case. So we do not have uh, the edge frequencies. So we are going to use this part because we have got uh, the resonant frequency and also the quality factor. So we're going to take this formula. So meaning to say to calculate uh, the total bandwidth, we are going to use the resonant frequency over the quality factor this is what we have in this case so our total bandwidth is going to be the quality factor of uh, 200 and okay the resonant frequency first sorry which is five megahertz that's five times 10 to the exponent of six uh, divided to the quality factor of uh, 250 so this is going to give us uh, 20,000 so we are going to obtain uh, 20 thousand hertz in this case all right so that is our total bandwidth in this case all right so how are we going to determine or how are we going to calculate now the the edge frequencies all right the edge frequencies they have got uh, their own formulas uh which we can take from so let us start with fh which is the higher one which is fh is given as the resonant frequency plus the total uh, bandwidth over two in this case. So meaning to say we can calculate our FH. We have the resonant frequency in this case uh, of five, uh, five megahertz. So that is uh, five times 10 to the exponent of uh, six plus 
that total bandwidth over two of which our total bandwidth in this case we calculated here that was uh, 20,000. So we are going to have uh, 20,000 over two. So this is going to give us FH, which is the, uh, if you simplify, you're going to obtain something like uh, 5010000, like this. Uh, actually, we can convert to megahertz so one two three four five six so you can convert to mega yes divide by one million in this case we're going to obtain 5.01 in megahertz in this case all right so that is it uh, for our fh what you simply need if for fl the lower one you simply subtract that is to obtain fl so fl you simply subtract so to obtain fl we are going to have FR minus the bandwidth, the total bandwidth over two. So that is how we can have this, uh, meaning to say our FL is going to be FR, the resonant frequency. We're just repeating this part, but just having a negative. That's time 10 to the exponent of six minus 20,000 over two in this case. So this is going to give us the lower part, uh, which is going to be four, uh nine nine uh, zero 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 like this uh that's we can convert or we can change to to megahertz divide by 1000 that will be 4.99 uh megahertz in this case so that was our question to calculate uh these frequencies uh, from the total bandwidth the ages which is uh, the age frequencies fh and uh, fl in this case uh all right so this is how they can actually ask these typical questions and uh that was uh, actually three marks all right then the other part of our question is uh, a phasor diagram is shown in fig2 so we remember we have a condition where we actually draw the phasor diagram uh, later on after you've calculated your currents, uh, the current across the capacitor, and so forth and so forth. We, we are actually used to that to, to, to represent our phasor diagram after calculating this. Now they have drawn for us the phasor diagram. And from this phasor diagram, they need us to calculate now the impedances from the phasor diagram all right so we need the impedance across a across b across c all right so how can we calculate the impedance? take note of the angles that you're given the phasor diagram here we are given the uh, from the angles we've got current and also the total voltage in in this case so the phasor diagram is of a parallel combination this one that we see where vs is the same throughout you're given the total voltage which is the same so how are we going to calculate the impedance for Z? The impedance for Z, we refer to the current that is affecting at Z, uh, at A. In this case, we are talking about calculate the following values. Z A, the impedance for Z A, that is, we refer to the current that is uh, affecting our A in this case. So meaning to say our 2.31 Z A is going to be the total voltage, which is a Vs over uh i a in this case so our voltage is in phase at zero it's it's actually in this line that is at zero degrees same with our current across a it's also at at zero degrees also so meaning to say our z a is going to be the voltage which is our voltage vs of 100 at an angle of zero degrees divided to the current our current is at zero it's in phase with the voltage there which is uh, 10 amps at zero degrees so that's the impedance uh remember in polar form or i say that you divide uh, if you're dividing you divide the resultant together then for the angles you subtract the angles all right so we're going to divide 100 divided to 10 uh this is going to give us a 10 in this case angle of zero minus zero that's that's a zero in this case all right so that is what you're going to have as uh, the impedance at A in this case, that is uh, the voltage over current. The same thing if you consider for B, the impedance for B, we have to consider our B in this case. All right, so this is where we've got our B in this case. So that will be 2.32. So for impedance at B, we are going to consider the total voltage that we have, but this time the current across B. So now, like I said, you must consider your your angles properly in this case remember 
uh, the voltage, the supply here is at zero degrees. So meaning to say this is going to be 100 angle of zero degrees. But if we check IB in this case, this current for B, our current is 13,426. What about the angle now? Take note, your angles should be taken from the positive horizontal axis like uh, this is where we have our IB like this. So we can take we can take this angle or we can take this angle here to the current that is at IB. So in this case, we are given this angle here of 147,5. But take note of the direction that we are considering. If we take this direction of clockwise, it's a negative. Anti-clockwise, it's a positive. So meaning to say, this angle is going to be negative 147,5 degrees. All right, so this is what you're going to have. And like I said, in polar form, guys, you divide these terms together. So you're going to divide your real terms, uh, which are not the real terms, but actually the, the, the resultant in, uh, in this part, which is going to give us uh, something like uh, 7,448. Then for the angles, like I said, you subtract. So this is zero minus. So it's zero minus minus uh, 147,5. So the 147,5 is taking, it's, it was a negative. We are supposed to subtract, but already there is a negative. So we are going to have, uh, at the end, we are going to end up with a plus. So this is going to be plus 147,5 degrees. Okay, so this is our impedance in this case for for the B part. All right, the same thing on uh, 2.33 uh, on two, on 2 to calculate the impedance for C, which is ZC. This is where we are having our current C uh, related to what we have. So with the same idea or the same information, uh, we are going to have this as the total voltage over the current C, which is our voltage. Like I said, this is at zero degrees. So that's 100 at zero degrees. What about the current at C? This is our current C in this case, which is given as a 5,614 degrees. What is the angle? Uh, we are given the angle from the horizontal. Like I said, the angle is always taken from the positive horizontal. So this is our angle from the positive horizontal going this way of 63,3. We are using anti-clockwise direction and it's supposed to be a positive. So this is going to be taken as a positive 63,3. Three degrees. Okay, that is uh, how you take your angles uh, uh, clockwise opposes the way that you understand about being clockwise. That is where you subtract. Anti-clockwise, it's, uh, uh, it's a positive. All right. So like we said, in polar form, what we are going to do is to simply divide your terms together, the resultants together. So if we divide these two, we, that's 100 divided by 5,61, we are going to obtain 17, 813 angle of we are dividing so we subtract the angle so that that's zero minus 63 comma three so if we subtract we are going to obtain negative 63 comma three degrees all right so this is going to be our zc uh the impedance across c in this case in uh, uh, in ohms. So this is how we can answer these typical questions. Just leave your answer in polar form. There's no need for us to convert uh, these ones to any other. You, yes, you, are, you can convert to rectangular form, but just leave your answer like this since we are not going to calculate any other thing later on. All right. So this is what we had, guys, and this is how our questions sometimes might be given as so what you need is to study your diagram uh know your currents how your currents are related from uh this axis uh the angles how the angles are taken in this case uh so that is how we're supposed to have our currents in this case uh that's it guys from Amazon african motives till we meet again